Good morning, everyone. We often hear people say that the eyes are the windows to the soul. The lips are perhaps the next most attractive region in a person's face. As the contribution of lips to facial aesthetics is tremendous, I decided to conduct a longitudinal cohort study on 29 orthodontic patients with increased overjet to identify the link between braces and lip shape. The title of my research is 3D Geometric Morphometric Analysis of Lip Morphology in Class 2 Division 1 Malocclusion. Let's have a look at what literature says about morphometrics. Morphometrics refers to taking measurements to study shape and form of a biological structure. Traditional morphometrics only measures length, depth and width without being entirely able to represent shape. By knowing the linear distances from one point to another, one cannot decipher shape. Hence, geometric morphometric analysis becomes very useful. This concept was familiarized about 25 years ago, but its popularity has increased in the last decade. It is an analysis that helps us to quantitatively determine how shapes vary. Landmark selection is a very important aspect in this analysis. Landmarks should be reliable and repeatable, and also adequately cover the morphology of the area of study. That brings me to my research questions. I asked myself three things. I wanted to know if there are variations in lip morphology in all these orthodontic patients. I wanted to know if there were significant changes in lip morphology at different time frames of orthodontic treatment. Next, is there a predictable pattern of shape differentiation in lip morphology from before to after treatment? brings me to the aims of my study. I wanted to investigate the variations in lip morphology and the effect fixed appliance had on the lips using geometric morphometric analysis. My objectives were to explore the lip morphological variations to determine whether there is a significant difference at different time frames of orthodontic treatment referring to the lip shape to demonstrate the pattern of shape differentiation in lip morphology. This study is a quantitative study, a two-phase longitudinal cohort study. Phase 1 was retrospective in which pre-existing good quality 3D scans were obtained and the same patients were followed up in phase 2 of the study. Patients who had incompetent lips with a pre-treatment overjet of 6 mm or more were included in the study and those with severe skeletal discrepancy were excluded. All of them had premolar extractions as well. Moving on to sample size calculation. In geometric morphometric analysis, Cardini et al. in 2015 introduced a method to actually count the sample size. The number of landmarks were multiplied together with the number of coordinates to yield a minimal sample size. In this study, nine landmarks were used in the lips. Multiplying into 3D coordinates, which gives us X, Y and Z, will yield a minimum sample size of 27. This was how the scans were taken. The patient was seated in the natural head position and five aspects of the lower part of the face were captured and these five images were merged in order to obtain this using a scanner software. The scans were taken at six different time frames before appliance, immediately after, three months after, six months after, 12 months after and six months after removal. Nine landmarks were identified in the lip region according to the given definitions. So this flowchart summarizes the methodology of the study. ICC intra-class correlation coefficient was done to test the intra-examiner and inter-examiner reliability and a range of 0.83 to 0.99 was obtained implying reliable and reproducible landmarking. I started off the study with 32 subjects. Three were excluded as they moved to another orthodontic facility so I had a final sample size of 29. Multiple software were used for data analysis, which I will be explaining in the slides to come. So all the 3D landmark coordinates were used for further analysis in the software mentioned. So what did I find out? From the demographic data, it is apparent that there were more female subjects of Malay ethnicity. 
principal component analysis was used to reduce the dimensionality of the data. In simple terms, simplify the data and categorize the different shapes according to its most distinct feature. The first four PCs accounted for 73% of the shape variation in all subjects, meaning to say that the first four shapes identified accounted for 73% of the 29 samples used in the study. Shape variations were identified using the Morpho-J software. There is a wide variation of lip shape amongst these 29 subjects. There was not a single distinct pattern that we can note. However, we can describe the lips according to four of these extremes. The outline of the lips can be described according to the geometrical shape of an ellipsoid. PC1 describes the widening of the lips horizontally. PC2 describes the vertical elongation of the lip. 3 describes the extent of curvature of the cupid's bow and PC4 describes the depth of the midpoint of the cupid's bow. These 3D images were generated from all the X, Y and Z coordinates used for the patients. An average um, shape was actually generated for each of the time frame. Horizontally, the lip acquired its widest width at T5 and remained the same till the end of treatment. Vertically, the incompetence gradually reduced from T2 to T6, becoming competent at the end of treatment. Sagittally, the nasolabial angle transformed from acute to a more average angulation. And of course, the depth of the labiomental fold, as you can see here from T1 to T6, has improved as well. So this is when a shell-to-shell -shell deviation or a color map becomes very useful. This is done using the Cloud Compare software and is generated by superimposing the T1 to the T6 image. The intensity of the color is proportionate to the amount of movement. The darker shade of green represents retrusion. The yellowish shade shows you protracted movement or areas where minimal changes have occurred. From this, we can see that the entire perioral region has actually moved backward at an average of about 2.72 millimeters. Only this region in yellow, which is the lower part of the philtrum, appears to have moved forward slightly. Well, what do these results essentially mean? In the vertical plane, the upper lip and lower lip both moved almost equally to improve competence. This is in agreement with a study by Ahn in 2014. Horizontally, the distance between the right and left lip commissure increased until T5, making the ellipsoid outline more horizontal. Sagittally, the prominence of the lip reduced by movement of both the right and left lip commissure more than the labiales superioris and inferioris, which would be the normal assumption that the most prominent landmarks will actually move backwards. Generally, the whole lip stretched in all directions after bracket placement, accounting for the thickness of the bracket itself, which is about 3 mm. So what was not expected of the study? The lower part of the philtrum actually moved forward at the end of treatment despite all other landmarks moving backward. And this is because this particular region is not only influenced by the incisor inclination, but also by lip thickness and strain of the muscle. There are three important clinical implications from the study. Firstly, communication. Clinicians can identify the pattern of change to address patients' expectations. Secondly, it can develop a local database uh, involving a larger sample size to include the various ethnicities in our Malaysian population. Thirdly, it's very cost-effective because all you need is a simple study model scanner and this can be replicated in a smaller institution. In conclusion, there are variations in the key features of lip morphology in all these 29 patients before orthodontic treatment. Two, there are significant differences in lip morphology at different time frames during orthodontic treatment. Three, there is a demonstrable pattern of shape differentiation in the lip morphology during orthodontic These are my references. I would like to thank the orthodontic department of University Kabangsa and Malaysia for the support provided in conducting this study. With that, I thank you.